How to tell if your broadhead opened. That is this episode of Death by Bungie. I hold before you the 20 inch Firebolt Carbon Arrow decked out with a 100 grain X-Act broadhead from Excalibur and a Burt Coyote Luminoc that I has been my favorite setup for years now. Last fall, I posted a video here on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, The Hunt of Mine, where I know for a fact the broadhead did not open on impact. That video is up here. You should go watch it if you haven't seen it already. But I get conversations every hunting season. I think this upcoming crossbow season will be no different from people saying, hey, my broadhead didn't open, blah, blah, blah. Now, I've lost deer over the years. I have lost to animals. That is part of crossbow hunting. That's going to happen whether we like it or not. That's just part of hunting. There's no guarantees in this business. I've said that over and over. Most of the time, I've been successful out there, and I can tell you, looking back at the times when I was not successful in finding the deer that I hit, I can pinpoint by going through all of the video footage and looking at it, and I can tell why I had a problem, why that problem arose. I usually can come up with really good information as to why that happened and explain it in a way that is not blaming it on equipment. It's not equipment failure. It's usually been human error. And I take responsibility for that. And I've talked about those on this channel. First of all, to find out whether or not the broadhead opened, you really got to find the deer, inspect it, and look at the wound and see whether or not the broadhead opened. Normally, when one of these broadheads functions properly, it opens up and you'll have the blades in the entrance wound. And in that case, I did not have that. Simply had a nice round hole the size of this broadhead as it is closed. But the broadhead had not fully penetrated the deer. The deer ran off with the arrow. So I know from that that it didn't open because when you look at these broadheads, when they are closed, they function very much like a field point or a judo point. They stop against it. And if they don't open up, then it can't penetrate all the way through. And in fact, the arrow in that video hadn't so much as scratched the other side of the rib cage on that deer. Now, what if we don't find the deer? How do we tell if it was the broadhead's fault or what the problem was? We can look at other things to find out whether or not that broadhead opened. Look at the blood trail. Now, just because you don't find a blood trail does not mean that that broadhead did not open. The lack of a blood trail can be a result of a number of factors. Every hunting experience is going to be different. I have made great shots on deer before and found not a single drop of blood while looking to recover that deer. If you look back at the, I have a doe hunt video on here where I killed a really, really big doe and that doe only ran 40 yards, but there was not a drop of blood. It was a perfect shot in my opinion. Found the deer with no problem once we went out looking, but did not follow a blood trail. I found a white belly. That's what we found. Actually, more accurately, my nephew Nick came over and helped me and he found that white belly in that particular hunt. Now, the other thing is to find your arrow. You can look at your arrow and determine whether or not that broadhead opened. Some people will say, well, I found the broadhead and it was closed, so therefore it didn't open. That's probably not the case, and here's why. As these broadheads hit, make contact with your target, make contact with the hide of an animal, for example, a deer, those flat points, those little feet, will pull that broadhead open. Now, some of them operate a little differently, their rear deployment, that sort of thing. But the concept is still the same, that these little feet up front are going to make contact with the hide after the tip makes contact, and it's going to force them open. Ideally, it forces it open, goes through the deer. The problem is with some models, and not so much with others, but with many of these models, the problem is, is that it is going to pass through the deer, and as it does, it slows down incredibly. It's going really, really fast, 300 feet per second, 350 feet per second, whatever, as it hits that deer. And then when it makes contact with the hide and goes through, it's going to slow it right down. As it slows down, it's like stopping it so fast that sometimes these blades will close as they're going passing through the animal. Typically that's going to happen after it fully passes through on the way out of the animal, but you're going to have that phenomenon happen either way. So when you pick up the arrow, look, their, their blades are closed or they're partially closed or whatever. Just because they are in a certain position when you find the arrow does not mean that they were in that position the whole time. It's typical that they will change. The other thing is, if you're hunting from a tree stand, lots of times I bury the arrow right in the dirt. So I go and retrieve the arrow and pull it out. And when I do, all the blades are closed. And it's easy to say, well, all the blades are closed, so therefore it didn't open. But that's probably not the case. When you pull those arrows out and you look at that arrow, you they may have been open in the dirt like this. And then when you pulled it out of the dirt, you pulled it closed. It's entirely possible. You gotta examine the broadhead a little bit. 
pop those blades open, look in there and look in those channels and see if there's dirt in the channels. Is there blood in the channels? Is there hair under the blades? That's a pretty good sign that the blade was open when it passed through the deer. If that got in there under that blade, that's a good way to look at it. Your blades will have debris on them and not just on the outside of them, but also on the sharp part of the blade. You'll have debris on there that will give you some evidence of them being open as they passed through the deer. And here's one other tip about making sure, finding out whether or not those broadheads opened. If you look on this one, this is a used broadhead I've got on here for this demonstration purposes. I'm gonna try and get really, really close with my camera with some special equipment, get that lens right up close so that you can see what I'm talking about here. But as these broadheads go through the deer and they open up, they swing down and then the back of the blade has a little foot on it to make contact with that ferrule. If you don't have a ferrule, a little aluminum ferrule, it'll have it'll make contact with the arrow itself, the shaft itself. But typically, you got a little ferrule there to make contact with. If that broadhead, if you simply open that up, it doesn't do anything. But with the force of firing this broadhead at a deer, as it opens up, it will slam the back of that blade up against that, and it will leave a little mark. It is categorical proof that that broadhead opened on impact. I can tell you right now, I have no question that this broadhead was shot at a deer or something that forced those blades open. And if you look, each one of those blades has a really nice clean mark where it made impact. It's aluminum, pretty easy to dent that and ding it up. And it'll be very, very evident. Sometimes they're not as evident. I've looked at other ones where it's just a little mark, but you can see it. You gotta look really close, but you'll be able to see it. And that, is clear proof that the broadhead opened on impact. Now, my point with all of this is simply to point out that typically the broadheads are gonna open. They almost all perform well. There's a lot of different manufacturers out there, but for the most part, the manufacturers today, they want you to succeed when you go afield so that you'll buy more of their products. These broadheads are single use in my opinion. Yes, you can reuse them. I've had mixed results with reuse and most of the deer that I've lost were on reused broadheads, so I don't do that anymore. I stick with just a brand new broadhead for each particular outing. And if you're using those mechanical broadheads, I recommend that that's what you would do. So that's it for how to tell whether your broadhead opened or not. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope your crossbow appreciation month is going just as great as mine is. I hope you're not getting flooded out like we are here. But other than that, I hope everything is going well for you. Subscribe so you can find out which broadhead I end up choosing as far as the upcoming crossbow seasons are concerned. And until next time, all hail Bungie!